Hi guys, today I'm going to discuss about accounting for job order costing. Hi, I'm the Commerce Specialist. Uh, you're watching my YouTube channel where you'll find video covering various academic qualification and professional certifications, including life-changing business ideas and hacks. So before I get into the accounting entries and other procedures for job order costing, let me explain what is job order costing. Broadly speaking, there are two famous type of costing system. One is known as process costing, the other is known as job order costing. For process costing, I've already created two videos, one on first in first out method, the other on weighted average method. You can watch those two videos. But today our focus is job order costing. Generally manufacturing companies, even service companies, they have to choose which type of costing method they have to use, whether a process costing or a job order costing. Job order costing system is used for businesses which make products as per customer specification. The best example I can give you is for a tailoring shop. So if I'm a tailor, Mr. X has placed an order to stitch a coat, Mr. Y for a pant, Mr. Z for a shirt. So these are three different orders for me. One of the important characteristics of job order costing system is that we do not require huge investment to start job order costing but we do require a lot of skill. Think about a software developer. So if I am a software developer, I am highly skilled. For me, every order is a different order. Probably a school has approached me to you know, develop a software so that they can manage the school system. A hospital may approach me, I have to develop a software for managing hospital affairs, so on and so forth. Another example is if I am a firm of auditors. So every audit I go for is a different job for me and that's different from the other one. So I'm auditing a bank that is different from auditing an FMCG. If I'm auditing an oil and gas company that is different from auditing an insurance company. So these are different orders. When we are working on jobs, we have to look, take into consideration a few important things. What is the cost of material used? What is the cost of labor? What is the cost of overheads? Total manufacturing cost for completing the job plus some profits. Here I've created a question. So for this question, I'll be telling you step by step, what are the different double entries we uh, generally uh, gave in job order costing system, uh, the relevant T accounts, so on and so forth. So if you look at this question, it says on January 1st, 2021, work in process job number 44 is this amount. So at the beginning of the year, job number 44 is still in process that means we started working on this job in the previous year but we could not complete this much of material has been put into production labor and overheads but the job is still incomplete then what is happening during the year job number 45 46 and 47 were started material purchased for 600,000. now please remember what we have to do is we have to give all necessary entries here so when we purchase material number one, what could be the double entry? The double entry is like this. If you're buying material, you debit material or raw material, whatever you like it. The amount is 600,000, so you debit 600,000. And nothing is said, you can write accounts payable. 600,000. So this is the first entry. When materials purchased for 600,000, you debit material and credit accounts payable. The second entry says material use for production 400,000 and for general use 50,000. Here you got to be very careful. Whenever material used for production, that means we are talking about direct material. And when we say material use for general use, we are talking about use of indirect material. So how to record direct and indirect material, please pay attention. When it says material used for production 400,000, production means direct uh, material used. So if direct material is used, we will debit work in process or goods in process, whatever you feel like. I'm using goods in process here, 400,000. For, for general use means indirect material. For indirect material, we always debit factory over it because indirect materials are part of overheads, which is 50,000. With the total amount, we will credit the material account, which is 450,000. So please remember, whenever direct material is used, whenever material is used for production, we are going to debit goods and process. 
for indirect material or general use we are going to debit overheads because all indirect materials fall under overheads all indirect cost in fact falls under overheads then entry number three it says labor costs assigned to production 300,000 and indirect labor is 25 so here again you got to be careful when we are talking about direct labor and indirect labor what should be the double entry whether it be direct material or direct labor we have to debit goods and process I'm going to debit goods and process which is 300,000 for indirect labor or indirect costs are part of overhead so overhead which is 25,000 and you can credit wages payable with the total 325,000 entry number four overhead applied to production 80 percent of direct labor now guys you need to understand what is application of overhead what does this mean application of overhead mean estimation of overhead overheads are generally estimated and there are five bases of estimating overhead it could be on the basis of labor cost labor hours machine hours uh, material cost or production so here we are estimating overhead based on direct labor and if you notice direct labor is this one so we are talking about application of overhead estimation of overhead at 80 percent of direct labor so the entry would be again goods in process debit and i can show here 80 percent of 400,000. this will be 320,000. and you credit overhead applied 320,000 something very important you guys should know that generally whether it be goods in process or work in process generally it is debited thrice once for direct material once for direct labor once for overhead applied so if you notice I have debited goods and process in entry number two goods and process debited once for direct material goods and process debited once for direct labor and once for overhead applied. Another thing you need to understand is debiting goods in process means what debiting goods in process mean debiting goods in process or work in process means that the production has started as production starts we start we start incurring cost incurring cost mean we are spending on material labor and over it especially direct material direct labor and over it applied for that you got to debit goods and process as you can see here goods and process goods and process goods and process debiting goods and process mean production has started so if the production has started somewhere it has to finish as well so if the production starts we debit goods and process if the production is complete we will credit goods and process so we will come to that entry what is entry number five actual overhead cost actual overhead cost is hundred thousand actual overhead is for example one of our common overhead is like uh, electricity actual overhead means when you receive the electricity bill that's the actual amount so when you receive the electricity bill what happens you have received the bill you have not paid yet so the entry is for actual overhead we always debit factory overhead and we credit accounts payable which is hundred thousand so when you receive the overhead bills in actual the entry would be overhead debit accounts payable and when you pay you can debit accounts payable and credit cash or bank depending on how you're paying same goes for wages also when you record wages you credit wages payable when it's paid you debit wages payable and you can credit cash or bank whatever it is now guys this next entry is very very important it says work in process or goods in process is completed to the extent of 90 percent now what is this 90 percent we are talking about we are talking about 90 percent of this amount this amount this amount as well as the opening balance so what we have to do is we have to add all of them 
and work out 90% of that. So let's see how much it comes to. Our opening work in process is 70, 90,000 plus direct material is 400,000 plus direct labor is 300,000 plus overhead applied is 320. The total amount is 1,110,000 and I need to take 90% of that into 0.9. This gives me 999,000. So the entry number six is actually, the amount will be 999,000. We know that. But what to debit and what to credit? As I said, there are two meanings for debiting work in process. Number one, work in process or goods in process is always debited generally three times once for direct material once for direct labor once for overhead applied which we have here one two three so work in process and goods in process is debited for these three but it also means that the production has started when the production is complete goods are complete we have to credit goods in process and debit finished goods finished goods so finished goods debit and you credit goods in process by this and this is obviously 90% of work in process in total all right generally what happens if you are not very lucky all the goods which are finished are not sold actually some of them are still left with us so we need to understand the goods which we have completed for 999,000 these are finished goods are we selling all of them or some of them so we are told here 70% of the jobs completed were sold. So let's stop here. 70% of the jobs completed. This is the jobs which is completed, finished goods. 70% of this is sold. So we have to give entry first for cost of goods sold. So the entry here, I am writing here 7A, is cost of goods sold debit. with 70% of 9900. So this is gonna give me 699,300. 699,300. And I credit finished goods. Finished goods. 699,300. Now this entry shows me that the goods were completed for 999, but out of this, this much worth of good have been sold for how much that is the amount for sales actually first we have to record the cost of goods sold then we will record how much they were actually sold for so it says so it says 70 percent of the completed jobs were sold at a markup of 40 so these goods which were completed for 699 300 we are going to sell them at a markup of 40 percent that means we will add 40% to this amount, work out 40% of this amount and add to this. Another way of doing this is just multiply this by 1.4. So this, if I multiply by 1.4, I'll get the selling price. So this would be 7B. We are selling, if nothing is said, that means we are selling on credit. So account receivable debit and sales credit. How much? The cost of goods sold multiply by 1.4 why because that's the uh, markup so we are adding some profit here so that is actually 979 and 20 979 and 20 we are also asked to prepare t accounts for work in process or goods in process and finished goods so always check for opening balance we have opening balance of if you add all of them it is 90,000 so opening balance of this would always be on the debit side so I can write here balance brought down 90,000 then goods and processes debited thrice once for direct material once for direct labor once for overhead applied so entry number two you can debit it with 400,000 entry number three you can debit it with 300,000 Entry number four, you are debiting it with 320. Okay, so if you add these, 
the total amount will be 1 million 110,000. This is the total amount. Now, if you look at entry number 6, we are crediting this. Goods in process is debited, as I said earlier as well. It's debited when the production starts. It's credited when the production is finished. That means when we have finished goods. So goods in process is credited with 999,000 in entry number 6. So I'm coming here entry number 6, 999,000. So 1 million 110,000 minus 999,000 will give you the closing balance of work in process which is carried down 111,000. So this gives you the same. We can prepare a T account for finished goods as well. But it's pretty simple. Finished goods is an asset. So there are only two entries. Entry number 6 finished goods is debited with 999. So this is entry number 6, 999,000, finished goods was debited. And if you look at this, 7B, we are crediting finished goods because this much has been sold. So entry number 7B, it is credited with 699, 300. So how much worth of finished goods is there in your closing stock? You just minus. So 999 minus 699. 300. 299,700 is the closing balance of finished goods which is not yet sold waiting for their buyers. Could probably will be sold next year. Sometime in examination they may ask you to calculate jobs completed or finished goods but they don't tell us that they are completed to the extent of 90%. Instead what they do is they give us the value of closing work in process. So if you have all these and if you're giving closing work in process, so from this amount, you minus closing work in process, you'll get the finished goods. This is the finished goods amount. Okay, I can write here, this is jobs completed or this is finished goods. So you can calculate finished goods in two different ways. First, you write everything which is possible on the debit side, which is normally opening balance. This entry is for direct material. This is for direct labor. This is for overhead applied okay so once you have on the debit side you total them up if you have closing balance of work in process you write it here and the balancing amount will be finished goods if you are given finished goods the balancing amount is your closing work in process likewise for finished goods t account there is a possibility that you already have some opening finished goods then you put it on the opening side opening balance here balance brought down then you have, this is the finished goods done during the year, jobs completed. Out of this, this much has been sold and this much has been left. Sometimes you are also asked to calculate over or under applied overheads. What is the meaning of over and under applied overheads? It's just a comparison between overhead applied and the actual overheads. Here, if you look at in this question, they are telling us that the only job in process still at year end is 47. So as a matter of principle, we should not be calculating over and under applied overhead. Why? Because this job which is still in process, in order to complete it further, more overheads would be used. So we can only calculate over and under applied overhead when all the jobs are completed. However, if you are still asked to calculate over and under applied overheads, as on this date, we can do that. How? We can just prepare a T account and we just call it overheads control account. And we're going to pick things from the entries. After creating a T account, let's look at the entries here. Is there any overheads here? No, there is an overhead here. Now, let me tell you this overhead is actually the actual overhead. Actual overheads are always written on the debit side. So entry number two, this is an actual overhead of 50,000, which we have recorded in the form of indirect material. Then there is an overhead here. This is also an actual overhead, 25,000. Entry number three, that is actually indirect labor. Okay, then we have overhead applied, which is estimated. Entry number four, estimated or overhead applied always comes here. This is estimated, means applied, which is 320,000. 
320. And then there is another actual overrated entry number 5. So I am writing here 100,000. And you will not find any overheads. So what is happening on the credit side is the overhead applied which means estimated. And on the debit side it is the actual overhead. So if we total this is 175. Actual overhead is 175 and the applied is 320. Applied means estimated. We estimated 320. We estimated overheads to be 320, but in reality they were only 175. So did we estimate extra? Yes, our estimation is more than the actual. We call this overhead over applied. So what we do is the difference of 320 and 175 is actually 145. We are going to write here as overhead over applied. Over applied means overestimated 145 and we can close this account. Now what should be the double entry for overhead over applied? So I'm giving the entry here. The last one entry number 8. See we are debiting on we are putting it on the debit side. So we will debit overhead accounts overhead control account by 145,000 because the difference is written on the debit side. So in order to close the account I am debiting overhead control by 145 and please remember the technicality here. The estimated overhead here was included into calculating the cost of goods. So if the overhead was over applied that means the cost has been overstated. So in order to reduce the cost what we will do is we will credit the cost of goods sold by 145. Since we over applied overheads that is to be adjusted to cost of goods sold. If overhead was under applied that means we estimated overheads to be x amount but in reality it, it turned out to be more. In that case this entry will be reverse because overhead were under applied underestimated so the cost was underestimated so we have to increase the cost in that case we will debit the cost and we will create the overhead uh, control account. So guys if you have any queries relating to job order costing please leave it in the comment I will reply to you. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel press the bell notification button so that you don't miss my important videos. If you like this video, please share it with your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit. Thank you so very much for your precious time.